My guest today is Heather Downing. Heather, how are you? I'm excellent. How are you, David? I'm doing really, really well. I, uh, considering how crazy the world is in 2020. Always. It has been an unusual year, to say the least. Tell me, what do you do for a living, I mean? <laughs> well, that's a great question. Um, I've been a software engineer for 10 years in the .NET space. Uh, right now, I work for Okta, uh, which is an identity management solution. That's and a great company. It is a great company. Uh, I work with amazing people there. And so several of them actually are in the .NET world. And um, I get to be the, the lead .NET uh, solution evangelist. Let me say that again. I get, <laughs> I get to be the... I have been given the privilege to be a .NET evangelist and advocate for Okta, specifically around our community. That's a fun job. And I know it used to, it used to allow you to travel the world. And I would see you in all parts of the world, and oh, that's yeah. those days are behind us. Absolutely. Unfortunately, uh, many things have changed, probably permanently. Uh, when I think about all the changes that have happened, it's kind of akin to 9-11 in many ways, because, you know, air travel was never the same after that day. Right. Uh, then that's when, you know, entire airports that weren't designed for additional security measures suddenly had to retrofit and that retrofitting has really just never gone away. Uh, so I think it'll be the same way when it comes to health screening now and deciding it, whether it's really worth it to assemble a large body of people because now cus customers, clients, companies all have to take on the risk of uh, being part of spreading this pandemic and so since that is likely a, a big legal risk as well we'll probably see significantly fewer events in the future oh i'm, I'm saddened to hear that well i think that's the reality though not uh, that we won't have events because there's i have been so busy since this whole thing has happened i think i've been busier since i've been home than when i was on the road because really? yeah because i can do attend a lot more because I don't have to have transportation in the middle of it. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't have to change time zones, although um, I still speak all over the world, so that means I wake up at 2 in the morning to go speak perhaps somewhere in Eastern Europe. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's, um, uh, it is a big change, especially for folks that are used to uh, in-person events. And I, I will, that's really what I mostly miss is the in-person communication and the hallway conversations, things like that. Um, you, you said, uh, when we were talking about what we want to cover in this show, you mentioned uh, developer burnout. And oh, yes. uh, I, I'm, I'm intrigued by that because I think I have a vague notion of what that means. But I think it means something different from, to everybody. T t tell me, what were you thinking when you said that? That's a great question. So to address burnout, you kind of have to know what it is, right? Yeah. Um, technically, it's a, I'm going to read this so that I can sound very intelligent. Uh, burnout is a state of physical or emotional exhaustion that also involves a sense of reduced accomplishment or maybe even loss of personal identity. So it's you often... You sound intelligent when you read that. I know. I mean, <laughs> read Wikipedia. You, you're good to go. But basically, it's often due to long-term and unresolvable job stress. But right now, we are in August, and we are experiencing kind of different waves of... Um, stress that has nothing to do with our job necessarily, but it has to do with the state the world is in. We're kind of in a holding pattern, for lack of a better term. And imagine being in a holding pattern, circling over an airport, um, and you still can't land, but you have things to do and people right. you need to see. And that's what's happening now is that, as uh, at least in the USA, which is where I live, and I believe you do as Me well. Too. I'm in Chicago. Uh, you're in Kansas City. Oh, yeah. We've got 50 states to contend with. So it's like a rolling um, wave of lockdowns that happen because as somebody gets better uh, and a lot of the cases lift, other ones will completely surge. And this isn't even winter yet, right? We are experiencing this in waves throughout our country. And I know the world as well. Brazil is in a terrible time at the moment. Um, and it'll be another country next month. So because we're constantly this holding pattern of is it safe to travel, is it not, um, it's also 
comes down to what the local laws are and whether or not you're even allowed to leave your house without permission in some countries, right? So because that is constantly in flux and we haven't really relaxed since basically February, um, that is a lot of additional external stress. And um, I don't have children, but many uh, of my friends in this industry do, and they have to also contend with them being at home for long periods of time and doing their own work. So when it comes to burnout, sometimes it is due to the job, but sometimes it's due to having to do software engineering while the world is in a state of a holding pattern and a little bit of disarray within like the family construct because everything has been thrown out the window. Nobody's prepared for this. So when it comes to our our work, a lot of times, myself included, whenever something tragic or very scary is happening and I want to handle it, I would throw myself into making my, keeping my mind busy. Some people might watch a whole lot of Netflix. I build a whole lot of applications and write a lot of code. And so by doing that, I was able to stave off a lot of the feelings of fear and anxiety because I was busy. So I busied myself with work. And if you know anything about the security world and the identity world, I mean, Okta has really taken off. That world is all about fear and anxiety. (laughs) It is fear and anxiety for sure. But but Okta has really just grown tremendously. And my role and everybody else that works with me has definitely had a lot of opportunities to make improvements to our system. And because we're growing, right? We're, We're adding more customers all the time. We haven't slowed down from this pandemic at all. So when it comes to that, I had an option to throw myself into it. But I noticed a common theme among several of my friends is that they're like, you know, I'm just really tired of Zoom meetings. And I'm really tired of doing this. Like I miss my friends, but I'm, I'm tired of having to like have a thousand gadgets going all the time and do my work. But then also in the same place I do my work, sit and have you know, real exchanges between humans on a friendship level basically means you never leave your desk. So whether or not you're working on uh, something related to your job or not, we are in front of our desks way more now for almost every aspect of our lives. And that also contributes to burnout. So uh, I do feel like there is a level of exhaustion that I'm seeing across our industry um, when it comes to this. And I know myself, I, I mean, my birthday is coming up here very soon and I'm looking forward to unplugging. I've never looked so forward to not bringing a phone with me <laughs> That's in my your life. birthday <laughs> gift to yourself is to unplug from your computer? <laughs> it is, it is. And it's interesting, um, even before this, uh, part of what I was seeing is that people who had like 20 years experience were describing the exhaustion levels they had with just trying to keep up with the changes in the .NET ecosystem, let alone the rest of the technology world. I mean, just in a few short years, we have autonomous driving vehicles. Oh, my goodness. And then all of a sudden that, you know, the ethics of that come up. And then we have to start thinking about the, the code that we ship. And then uh, a lot of DevOps is starting to be blended into our job as well. So now you have to have a a working knowledge of Docker. And on top of that, um, there aren't a lot of, unless you're in a very large company, there aren't a lot of database administrator only jobs anymore. You are that as well. So you have to make sure that you have an idea of how to keep that data safe. And then uh, to top it off, you will oftentimes, when you go to work at a new job, not have that handoff from the person who was there before. And uh, it depends on how good of a documenter you were of your code, but most developers are in a hurry and they tend not to document. So that can be just a lot all laid on your lap. And while I think there are incredibly capable people, such as yourself in this industry, Thank they you can. For saying so. Of course, they can both teach and code and do. Um, that's a lot in the lap of a person. I don't care how smart you are. Yeah, um, uh, that pressure to learn, constantly learn new skills and incorporate them into your job. That's, that's the best and worst part of this job, I think. You know, I, I, you and I love to learn, I think. Of, uh, but still, it's work. It's pressure. It is work and it is pressure. Um, it, it's not made easier by the demands that are placed on this rule because... Everybody wants a senior developer. Nobody wants a junior. Um, but 
God bless, they have really saved many companies' butts when it comes to grinding some not so attractive looking coding situations. And I've definitely been through that. So there are a couple of um, symptoms that I've that I, I, I kind of took from Coding Mindfully's blog that I wanted to share. And if, yeah, I'm not a doctor. Obviously, <laughs> burnout is not the same as like a psychologist telling you that you're burned out. You, I think you pretty much know if you are. A very yeah. close friends of uh, mine's industry kind of understand they are. But just in case uh, you don't know. I like this disclaimer. It reminds me of Jeff saying, I'm a lawyer, but I'm not your lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm not even a doctor, and I'm not your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a student of psychology. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I, I like studying it. All right. um, okay, so they did a survey of like a, about 55 developers that they knew, and they kind of put together a checklist of things that are symptoms, right? Okay. Uh, Okay, so a few of them are cynicism or feeling critical of the whole idea of even writing code. Uh, I bet <laughs> that guy. <laughs> yes. This could show up as like repeated negative thoughts or statements about building software or writing code. Um, that manifests itself very often on Twitter or Stack Overflow, um, where if everything is constantly negative, you're really just not enjoying yourself when you're doing yeah. this. Another one is the lack of the necessary energy needed to even get your work or other coding projects done. So... Feeling like it's difficult to physically write code or to find the mental energy required to organize your thoughts. Uh, I mean, I'm seeing that right now for people who don't claim to be burnt out, right? And of course, lack of motivation to turn up the work, you know? like Turn up? Yeah, turn up to do the work. Like, you, you're like, ah, I really don't feel good today. And it's totally valid, you don't. But sometimes you know, your subconscious brain just says, I need a break and I'm going to make you feel sick so that you take a break. And right. that is proven that it happens anxiety does that to many people but in this Start case oh yeah oh my goodness anxiety is a whole other topic and when it comes to this it's definitely you just as you think about the work you are exhausted as if you've already done it mm. you know and then that kind of saps all your energy um sometimes it's unnecessary or repeated irritation or anger at your co-workers this one snuck up on me unexpectedly. I mean, really? I work with them. Yeah, I work with amazing people. But when I was just in a place where I was feeling overwhelmed and, you know, then I, something else was piled on um, last minute, I, I kind of said something snarky. Now, that's not really my style. I tend not to be a snarky person. I tend to... <laughs> I tend to try and be decent human, right? Uh, but that, yeah. that surprised me to the point where uh, my coworker was like, hey, can we... Can we chat on Zoom real quick? You know, I'm like, oh no, what did I do? It turns <laughs> out that uh, it was very obvious. I was wearing it completely all over my sleeve. And I'm not saying that you should keep it bottled up or not. They just noticed that something was wrong. Uh, so pay attention to that. Um, avoidant or addictive behavior is another symptom. So like substance abuse, excessive alcohol, overeating, uh, gaming to the point where you ignore your work um, is a way of coping with the demands that are placed on you. So that can definitely be something that um, I can say was was me. Uh, I didn't know it at the time, but uh, my father had a little bit of history of alcoholism uh, that was not shared with us before he passed. And um, that definitely snuck up on me for a little bit where I would say it was a little bit more excessive, but I wasn't going out anywhere. I was just at home, right? So to me, it didn't feel like there was any danger. Um, but what I noticed is that it hit my pocketbook, right? Is that I realized I went through a certain amount of whatever alcoholic beverage it was really quickly. And, and it was about the, the third week I was, um, that I was dealing with this p pandemic in the, early, in the early months when we thought it was only going to be a month, right? Uh, <laughs> um, that really hit me like financially. And I, and I thought, uh, maybe that's a Kobe mechanism. And so I just talked to my therapist about it. A little bit but that snuck up on me because in general I wouldn't say that it's something that, that happens to me often right. um, but I, I, apparently it's also hereditary that if you have anybody in your family history that that actually is a way that your brain is sometimes hardwired to deal with stress um, and of course the compulsion to overwork is a, is an, an interesting one too because you have to overwork to compensate for that feeling of falling behind you know, in the industry, I know that it's almost like a worry that sits on your shoulder, like, like a, an evil Jiminy Cricket that says, hey, <laughs> you know, everybody's talking about, uh, you know, this 
new way of, do, of dealing with APIs and, you know, why don't you know about this? Or, hey, do you know how far Xamarin has come now? Why haven't you built something in say, eight months? You know, now you have no idea what's going on with that system. And so that definitely can hit um, your, it's almost like a guilt trip you give yourself. Mm. Yep. And of course, there's that sense that the project or team will fall apart without you. Yeah. Right. Feeling that that entire the entire success of the enterprise rests on your shoulders. So alone. if I take a vacation day, the, the whole place <laughs> is just going to collapse without me there. Well, that actually might be true. Uh, we call that the bus factor, right? Um, good oh, friend yeah. of mine. I talked. I talked uh, uh, to his name is Bill Dinger, and he was uh, my favorite bus factor to talk about because he was so capable that he just loved coding and he would do a lot of it himself. But um, because he was coding and busy building things, um, there wouldn't often be a lot of pass on and there wouldn't be a lot of contextual awareness from the rest of the team of what was happening and what he was doing. So if he got sick or if maybe he had to leave or got uh, hit for, by a bus or got <laughs> hit by a bus, it's true that things probably would have fallen apart. So once we talked about that bus factor, um, he was so much better about at least sharing the context of the knowledge. Right. And that made it possible for him to, I don't know, leave for a week to go on a trip or something like that. I'm only picking on him because I love him to death and he knows this <laughs> about himself. That problem with being gifted and capable, some people who are just these prodigies, um, they have accepted that they will just accomplish more than other people. So they don't see the burnout hitting them, creeping up on them because, well, they've always just been capable of more. So why would they pace themselves? Because they've never measured themselves by the way the average developer does. Yeah. So it can definitely that's a good, up. That's a good segue into, um, you mentioned a lot of these things that uh, almost every single one of them I've experienced, either this year or throughout my life at some point. But um, those are symptoms. What, what's the, what, how, what are the coping mechanisms? What can you do to resolve this or at least mitigate it? Well, there's something I'm going to also say as a disclaimer. If you're not seeing a therapist, make an appointment right now and i don't, okay. don't be too prideful for it stop what you're doing right now david <laughs> give him a call <laughs> there's maybe lots of, after this call <laughs> yeah maybe later there are lots of people that are available to you right now online you don't even have to get in your car <laughs> you know right and go there i think i think most of them are like that now yeah mo- had, a lot uh, of them are COVID. <laughs> yes i agree with that you have to start there because what you need is specific to your brain, but I can give you some generical, uh, generical, listen to my words. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stress talking. <laughs> <laughs> I could give you some basic coping mechanisms that are probably pretty safe and what I've been able to do. Uh, so I've set myself, um, because I didn't really need to set, it depends on whether or not you are doing overwork or you don't want to turn up to work. There's, there are two different ways that, mm. um, two different symptoms, right? If I don't want to show up to work, which was the problem I was having, and please get this, I am so blessed, and I work with kick-ass people on a kick-ass product. Um, I just adore my boss. Like I have the perfect situation, and if I don't want to turn it to work, that must be burnout talking, you know, or some sort of thing going on. So make sure that you know, you, number one, you you talk to your therapist uh, and let them know what's happening, and they can specifically tell you how to cope. But what I have done to kind of pull myself out of this, and it has been very recent, so I can just share what it has been personally for me. I had to talk to different people than the ones I've been talking to. And when I say different, I mean not other cynical people that are also burnt out. I wanted to hear from people who were excited about doing technology. So I turned myself on to starting to talk to, just talk to them, talk to and mentor um, other junior developers coming out of a boot camp. And they think about the world in so many different colors and um, excited, with excitement. And they're like, this is, this is something that's super cool. And they wanted to talk about the hacking that happened at Twitter. And then they wanted to talk about how they would build this new VR game. And, and it just reminds you why you did this in the first place. If you don't have a reminder that it's not just about the grind, right. um, you're going to believe that it is only about the grind. I do think that there are some truths that are, are, are hard that I had to learn between being a junior and a, and a senior to architect level, uh, but um, I don't think cynicism needed to be one of them. 
So um, just keep in mind that, that there are some difficult truths, uh, right? That you either produce or you don't. If you don't produce, you probably won't keep your job. So there, that worry will be on your shoulder regardless. But that doesn't mean that you can't pick and choose what is the most important 80 to 90% of what that company needs you to do. So let's say you have 20 things. Probably about 17 of them are, I don't want to say busy work, they're just deprioritized. If you only- Priority is a, priority is a great word for this. Yes. Uh, if you're like, I'm exhausted, I only have so much energy. Let's say that you're in a battle because sometimes it feels like burnout is a battle. Um, if you only have one, like a couple minutes to really fight and, and make an impact in that battle, what are you going to fight with and wh who are you going to target, right? So pick up maybe the weapon that is best served to you. For me, it would be a bow and an arrow, but it might be a sword <laughs> for you, David. And proverbially, of course, I'm speaking. And then slay whatever dragon might be causing the most damage or that you think would be make the biggest impact if you only have five minutes of strength right. slay that biggest dragon because you will feel the accomplishment because it was a priority to the company and it was a priority to your coworkers and to you even if you don't have the energy to do the other 17 things more than likely you will be given grace and you will, because you were able to help them with the biggest and impo most important thing one second no no you don't get to chew on my couch. Go chew on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So uh, I think this might be one of the ways that you're dealing with stress is what you just, you were just, who are you talking to just now? <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, tell um, me, tell us. Uh, I think it's relevant to this conversation. Right. So uh, sometimes when you are burned out, you, you don't feel like what you do matters and then you just don't care about it anymore. Uh, help people in some way. In my case, um, I didn't want to help people because we're all very catching right now with this virus. So I'm fostering dogs, specifically Huskies and Malamutes. And that has been a way for me to kind of get out of my own way, my own head, and be there for something else. But it has nothing to do with tech. So I was able to still kind of help a dog that otherwise would have been put down to find a family. And that's very fulfilling, so it also kind of rejuvenates your spirit, too. That's great. Yeah. I suspected that, I know you're doing it for some altruistic reasons, that you're helping out this dog and uh, reducing the risk that it'll be put down, but also I think it helps you as well and helps you deal with stress. So It does because, I mean, I would say the stakes are a little bit lower than if you were fostering a child or um, helping you know, other humans. Um, it could be something as simple as just starting a garden or planting things in your you know, local community, things that don't have to do with the stakes being high because that just adds to the worry and the burnout you're experiencing. Um, stakes need to be just a little bit lower but still very fulfilling, right? Um, I know that for me, it has been um, helpful to limit how much online exposure I have now. Uh, and I say that meaning that I, I pick and choose now if I speak online or if I do an interview. So, you know, this you are special and I said yes to I feel special. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, but I would say that um, what really started pulling me up is that it was possible that I can do some good in the world while the world feels like it's falling apart. And that is, of course, the external stressor to the burnout. But... Uh, Look for the helpers is what Mr. Rogers always would say. I love that. Right? It was and his, mother, his mother who said that. Yes, absolutely. Um, but instead of looking for the helpers, become the helper. And then you will feel like you're part of the solution, even in a small way, and not part of the chorus of unhappy, depressed people that are now around us. That's a great message. Um, well, so are, do you think you're you're um, on the right path yourself? Are you are you is this working for you, or is yes. it the stress still piling on? That's a great question. Um, recently, I've had more increased responsibility, um, which I could have chosen to look at as a really fearful thing, um, or I can choose to look at it as an adventure. <laughs> um, this is a great time to set something called boundaries. Uh, please, for the love of God, uh, set boundaries with your 
boss and yourself, I know that you're going to want to please because you want to prove your value and your worth, especially as people are losing their jobs around you. Um, but you have to set boundaries of what is realistic. If you're available 24 hours a day, they will take advantage of that because they believe that you're just addicted to your craft and you like being bothered at two in the morning. Uh, don't do that. Make sure you set your boundaries. But also for yourself, you must walk away so that when you walk to it, you have more freshness. That's really important. Uh, for myself, that has really worked. Um, I also set kind of like mini, I don't want to say vacations, uh, but if, if you, have you ever read The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss? I have not. Oh, it's a great book um, about just teaching you about that, you know, top percent of priorities that if you get that done, that you're actually doing most of the work that matters is just those few priorities. Um, but also uh, talks about... Um, Oh my goodness, I just lost my train of thought. We, we, we were somewhere, right? I was talking about you and your coping mechanisms. Yeah, coping, thank you. Um, micro vacations. So when we, that means that you just take the weekend and go somewhere. Um, remember, you can go somewhere in your vehicle and you are safe from <laughs> the rest of the world. Right. Uh, another way to go look at, at that is please, even if you've never hiked a day in your life, um, hike a little hill behind a you know, park and start the process of, you know, going through the Lord of the Rings journey of just walking and thinking about your life. And I promise you it that clarity does come because it has worked for me. And, I, and of course, the last one is um, make sure that you're regularly talking to a therapist that you like. If you don't like your therapist or you think they're full of hooey, then please find another. There are a lot of really amazing ones. I specifically needed one that understood my life um, and my career as um, a, a, like a, a female in tech that's in now becoming into a leadership position. There are different kinds of expectations um, from the public world on you um, that if you make a mistake are just so much more dire or they seem to be. And so um, I didn't find the right therapist for three times, and then I found the right one who had basically coached um, really amazing women and, and knew what my brain was doing to me about some of that stuff. Uh, so that helped me. But when it comes to you have to be everything, you have to be a parent, and you have to be um, – a stellar employee and you have to help your neighborhood and you have to help your church and help everybody make sure that you take that time for you i don't believe that the term self-care has um, really resonated with our community very well so what i will say is take time for yourself that doesn't involve you in front of a screen i don't care what it is can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the stressors that are unique to women in tech that maybe don't affect me uh, well, you know, every person is also unique. So there are women in tech that don't experience the stressors that I do because they have always been well regarded and they perhaps have always like, just been known. Like you. You're no, that's not true. <laughs> that is true. That's absolutely true, whether you feel it or not. <laughs> well, perhaps. Um, let's just say that depending on the area that you live in, you may experience different levels of prejudice. I live in an interesting part of the U.S., okay. um, right? Um, but there are women who don't live here. Maybe they live in Europe. They live in Australia. They live wherever. And they don't experience any prejudice um, by their accounts. But I would say the stressors, if I were to make a blanket claim, are that we, the expectation is that we were only put in this position to fulfill a company diversity card. Therefore we actually have to perform at a higher level in order yeah. to be considered to, to prove that's false. So there's a yes. pressure that I don't really have. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. So, but that is, I, I would say that by and large, that is the thing. There's also um, different stressors when it comes to what is an acceptable excuse for um, absence. Uh, if let's say that you're, you are burnt out and you're not feeling well, but part of that is because you just became pregnant or, um, you have are the only caretaker in the family for like maybe your elderly parents, and that's not something necessarily that your husband would be expected to do, but you you are because they're your parents, not his. So there are there's like always the worry that well would a man bring that that kind of inconvenience to the company, mm. you know? And these are well hashed out, well known issues uh, that have 
plague deaths for a long time, but that doesn't mean that they're not still part of our society, at least in America, right? So right. those are, of course, additional ones um, to consider if you're a female. But honestly, at the end of the day, we're all developers. I, I really, um, I love celebrating our uniqueness, but we all kind of have the same problem, which is we fell into an industry that uh, at least at one point we loved. <laughs> and sometimes it's been great to us, probably monetarily been great to us. And uh, we've been able to make something out of nothing and felt like wizards. But it also demands a lot of our attention, our time, but also our quality. If we don't ship quality code, that is like the worst sin, right? Is that <laughs> we've done, done something bad. And uh, sometimes we s s flail ourselves for something that we didn't do as high as perfectly as maybe we could have and of course we don't help each other because we expect that of, of one another so you try doing a pull request on a major sdk you know out there and see how that goes with all the comments you know there we hold everybody to a high standard because we have to i mean there's our software is running those self-driving cars that are making the decision whether to you know swerve around a dog to hit the lady on the end of the street or roll into the ditch with the people inside of it my goodness what about the people who designed the software that ran on the max 8 planes on boeing's planes that had all those issues i mean we are writing software that makes a difference even if you didn't with your one library, your one library that might be a JSON parser could be used on one of those planes later on in the right. future. So uh, there is like a demand kind of like, like I wouldn't say as high as the medical profession, but it's pretty high up there that we have demand and there are stressors because we don't want all of our code to fall apart. But we also understand because we are in this industry, how much of the internet is held together with bubble gum and <laughs> tape. Like, it's crazy how I'm like, well, this is why this uh, software didn't work very well for this election or, or that, you know, because, yeah, because they used this and they used basically people who've only had a couple years experience. But and that's they, they hacked it together. <laughs> well, they had to. Somebody had to do it. There's only so many seniors in the world, and a lot of them are burnt out. Uh, we're just about out of time. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to cover? Uh, the only thing I think I'd like to say is that have faith that this is going to not just get better for you at whatever junction in your life you're at with this burnout it will get better but only if you purposefully make the attempt for it to get better otherwise we'll lose you and all your knowledge in this industry and we need you right now more than ever so make sure you take the time to get yourself right and fall back in love with technology. If you don't know how, reach out to me. I'm Coraline on Twitter, and I'm happy to talk to you at length about anything that you're going through. Heather, thank you so much for your time. You stay safe. You too. When you are burned out doing technology, remember all of the friends you've made in this industry and it'll reinvigorate you.